everyone. Welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thanks so much for joining me. Now today we are going through part two of the August 2018 material. That's Libra through to Pisces Moon. So let's get stuck into Libra. Libra Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Let's take a look at your fast moving planets for this month. So we're going to do your fast moving planets this time. We're going to do Sun, Mercury, Venus, and then we're going to do Jupiter, Rahu, Ketu, check-in, and I'm going to do something a little bit new there. So you'll see what I mean when we get to it. Let's take a look at your sun. So on August 17, the sun will shift from your 10th house to the 11th house, and this is looking really good. Oh, lucky you. You've got a wonderful time with your sun, Libra moon. This is fantastic. So the things that you have to look forward to are growth in terms of business and career. Definitely, um, you know, increases in profit if you're a business person, uh, new opportunities if you're a self-employed business person, promotion if you're a salaried employee. This is wonderful. It's all this good career stuff going on for you. Looks like, yeah, good gains, um, good travel opportunities as well. Great time to travel and appreciation from your boss. So there's a lot to look forward to in terms of your solar energy there. Let's take a look at Mercury. Mercury for the entire month will be in your 10th house uh, until September the 2nd. Mercury is going to go forward August 19th. So Mercury is in retrograde now, I'm pretty sure. Um, but he's going to be retrograde for most of that month until August 19th. Now this is going to have you inclined towards spirituality. <clears throat> it's going to have, it's going to, you know, support your career in a really good way, support income. So this is fantastic. Um, definitely great if you're a contractor or self-employed business person, you know, you can look forward to some good stable income at this time. Uh, career growth is indicated. Your relationship with your spouse should be good. This is great. Social status, improvements to that, wonderful. This is good. And mental peace. Let's take a look at Venus, Libra Moon. So Venus is going to be in your 12th house all month until September the 2nd. Now, here we're looking at financial gains. <clears throat> financial gains will be good. Uh, at this time, material comforts, you're going to enjoy some of that. Good time to travel, and I think we had that with your son as well. One thing that you got to watch out for is that Venus might get a bit excited when it comes to spending, and you might end up buying things that you don't particularly need. So watch out with Venus. She might be particularly happy, and, you know, if you're traveling and you're at the duty-free counter, you might buy things you never dreamed of buying so be careful uh, and also be careful of your goods as well with this placement so this is the kind of thing where ladies if you have a handbag just hold on to it a little bit tighter um, you know just be careful of your goods you don't want to lose them okay so your your material uh, wealth even even your money as well you know it's a good time to be organized with money and Venus in the 12th is a great time for singles to potentially meet someone. So that's really nice as well. Now let's take a look at Jupiter. Jupiter in your first house. Okay, what I'm doing with these slower moving planets, this time I'm going to do something a bit different because we've checked in with Jupiter before. Last time we looked at Saturn and this time instead of Saturn, I thought let's do a Rahu K2 check in. We haven't checked in with those two for a while. And instead of me just rattling through, you know, what's going to happen, because I've done that before and I don't particularly want this to get repetitive or boring, I want it, you know, it to be different each time and exciting. So I thought this time I'd ask you a question. And in the pondering of this question, you will be directly working with the energy of the planet in question. Okay? So. Jupiter in the first house, the question to ponder is what does spirituality mean to you and how do you experience the divine? That is a big question. And you know, just take a couple of moments, just take a little while. When this video ends, just sit in silence for a little while, really think about, yeah, how, what does spirituality mean to me? 
and how do I experience the divine and see if you can feel some of that Jupiterian energy you know working with you and what you uncover through you know a little bit of meditating on this kind of question that could be quite interesting a nice little exercise uh, let's have a look at Rahu Ketu check in so Rahu's in your 10th house so the Rahu question to ponder is if you could upgrade your image in a professional sense what would you do that is a really interesting one one of my friends uh, she's a social worker and she we were talking about things and we're talking she had a lot of problems with her work people she's on holiday now so I don't know how she's doing but um, she had a lot of problems with her work people and I actually just out of the blue I don't know why this came to me but I just suggested to her that you know you should wear a suit jacket and she was like oh my god yeah I should and she's like that would give me the authority that I need somehow the wearing of the suit jacket was like this profound thing. I, I don't know, I, and I don't know why I suggested it. I just did, and you know, it was so interesting how she took that little bit of something on board. She was just like, oh "My God, I should just change my wardrobe a little bit, and then that will give me the authority I need to act in a certain way." And I would never particularly I don't know I, I don't place that much importance on clothes but I can see yeah that 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 could make a real difference and it was really making a difference to her that's what I'm remarking on how she really took that on board and she went oh my god I need to change my wardrobe and yeah it was just this cool thing and I, what I've got here is if you, if you could upgrade your image in a professional sense what would you do I've got for example professional photos on LinkedIn so what a lot of people do is they will actually spend a little bit of money um, getting a really nice professional photo done for their LinkedIn I always think that's a nice thing to do I'm I work in you know I used to work in advertising and you know um, and now I work from home doing all these readings and all that kind of thing so for me it really doesn't matter and even in advertising because I worked in the creative department I wasn't client facing I could wear anything so I've never really bothered too much with all that but this is something for you to think about. Rahu's in your 10th house and Rahu might want to dress in a new way, in a sharper way or get some sharp professional photos for LinkedIn. This, these coming months will be a good time to do that. Uh, Ketu question to ponder. Okay, let's have a look. What can you do to alleviate mental stress or keep stress from entering your home? Okay, that's really important. When you go home from work, do you really leave the office behind? Okay, that's another question. That's another way of looking at this energy. So this is really the thing that I want you to ponder. This is interactive. And think about, yeah, what can I do to alleviate mental stress or keep stress from entering my home? So that when I, you know, when I leave the office, I'm really leaving all that stress in the office and I'm not bringing it into my home life. How do I do that? And I'll give you a little tip. Um, so this was in the same conversation I was having with this friend who was having all the problems at work and she got that wonderful discovery of wearing a suit jacket which was cool um, but like I actually suggested that when she leaves work she really you know on that train ride home because she was also kind of saying how she really doesn't like the long train ride home it takes an hour to get home and I know what that's all about because I've traveled a lot for work and one of the things I used to do was I'd visualize um, putting my stress onto the train tracks as the train would move. And I would visualize it for the first few minutes of the train track. And I would visualize that the stress is left in the city. And then when I get home to my lovely home, I feel a lot cleaner and a lot tension free and a lot better just by doing that simple visualization. So what can you do to alleviate mental stress or keep stress from entering your home? Libra Moon. So that is my little overview for you, Libra Moon. We are now going to meet Scorpio Moon. Welcome, Scorpio Moon. Great to see you. Thanks for joining. Now, I'm going to take a look at your faster moving planets and then we're going to hop into your slower moving planets. This time, we're doing something a little bit different with the slower moving planets, and you'll see what I mean when we get to those. So, we're going to take a look at your sun. So, on August 17th, your sun shifts from the ninth house to the tenth house. And okay, this is a little bit mixed here. So it looks like your expenses might be a bit high and you might just want to watch what you say, um, especially 
in, in regards to your relationships, people around you, your co-workers, um, your boss, it's like just a bit more awareness might be needed in your relationships at this time. And I think we're going to see that with Mercury as well. Yes, we are. So yeah, that is, um, that's something you're going to want to do this month. Uh, but then when that shift happens, August 17th, you're going to head into a really good time. The sun is going to provide you with growth in your business, in your career, good profit, uh, you know, good profit with little effort. We all love that. Promotions, new opportunities, all that kind of thing. So you're going to have a good time with the sun eventually, but it might take a little bit of extra consciousness to get there. So I'm, I'm sure you'll be able to do just fine with that. Mercury is in retrograde uh, until August 19th. And Mercury is going to be in your ninth house for the entire month. And what can you expect here? Right. So again, this is that watch what you say with relationships, um, you know, and, and, and particularly with your father for example. Uh, avoid any arguments with him at this time <laughs> if that's something that um, you need to keep an eye on. Uh, it won't be everybody, you know, and, and that's the thing with your particular chart, some of this will pan out and some of it won't. Um, I mean, Mercury's not particularly thrilled to be here, I can tell you that right now. If you're experiencing any financial losses or if you're finding that you're ha having to work extra hard to maintain your position at work, this could be why. One of the things you can do at this time is cut down on expenses. That will certainly help. So we're going to have a look at Venus and Venus is giving you some good energy as Venus does. Sometimes she doesn't but in this case she certainly does so you're very lucky. Uh, for all months she's going to be in your 11th house until September the 2nd. This is great. So if you've got good things going on it could be down to Venus. Uh, we're looking at expansion in, of wealth, name, fame, you know, gonna, you're going to be recognized. Um, you can expect support from friends, which is great. Your network circle will be supporting you. Uh, it's good for the domestic scene. It's good for, you know, time with your partner. Um, great socially. And, of course, singles, now's the time to get out and mingle. You knew I was going to say that. That's starting to get cheesy. I'm going to have to come up with another line, I know. Uh, let's take a look. So those are your faster moving planets. Let's take a look at your slower moving planets. Now we're going to check in with Jupiter. And we're going to check in with Rahu and Ketu. Now, last time we checked in with Saturn and this time I'm mixing it up even more. What we're going to do is instead of me giving you a rundown on what's happening because these guys are staying in the same place for months. So I don't want this to get repetitive and boring. So what I thought I could do is this time I'd ask you a question. And in the pondering of that question, you can work with the energy of that planet. Are you ready? Let's go. So Jupiter in your 12th house, your question to ponder is, if you could go somewhere far away just to indulge in spirituality and teachings of the divine, where would you go? I love that question. And do you know where I would go? I, this isn't even my one, but I, I, I you know, I, when I was coming up with a question, I was like, oh, I love this question. And I already have a place that I want to go. I want to go to Thailand. I would love to go to Thailand. Apparently, Deepak Chopra spends like a month or two every year, like, I don't know, doing some yoga retreat or something there. I think, like, he, but he actually attends it. He's not running it. I think he's attending it. I've heard that, where that's like his getaway place or something. Uh, I definitely think that would be a cool place to go. I'd love to do that. So there we go. I answered your question for you. <laughs> no, but seriously, have a think and have a Google search. Go on YouTube, look at a beautiful hotel, look at somewhere where you'd like to escape to. Just in a light way, not like you're going to book it and you're going to do it. No, this is just playtime. It's just fantasy. It's the 12th house. You can fantasize here. Have some fun. You know? Uh, so Rahu Ketu, let's check in with those guys. So Rahu is in your ninth house. And the Rahu question to ponder is, if you could take up study in terms of higher education, what would you do? I love that question. Uh, and I've been checking stuff out myself I've been looking at you know there are some amazing I've seen these um, universities in like 
Amsterdam and the Netherlands and you, know, you can do these amazing online courses for one year and stuff like that. It's incredible what you can do these days. So, you know, there could be a, a course that you want to do for a few months or something like that. Add it to your CV. It could be very impressive. Uh, Ketu question to ponder. Ketu in your third house. Yeah, I, I had a really elegant little question here, which none of the others are getting, but you're Scorpio Moon and you're lucky and you're getting it. And the elegant little question is, what's your dream job? Wow. That's a big question, Scorpio Moon. I leave you with that. Ponder these things. Meditate on these things. Reflect on these things. Maybe get out a journal and jot some things down. This is imagination time. You know, just enjoy. Just come up with some really interesting answers to these questions that are uniquely you especially with Rahu and Ketu Axis there. Well, Scorpio Moon, thank you for joining and we're going to welcome Sagittarius Moon. Sagittarius Moon, welcome to your reading. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at your faster moving planets and then we're going to jump into your slower moving planets. So for the faster moving, we've got the sun. August 17th is shifting from your 8th house to the ninth house. Uh, is this good? I mean, this is kind of looking, yeah. So there's some stuff here. So, I mean, you could be encountering opposition, right? That happens. Um, there, there could be some, for some of you, not all of you, there may be some legal hurdles or things that you have to deal with, uh, that you would rather not deal with. Um, health, this is one to be careful of. Just if you're feeling tired, rest. And I know that sounds so obvious, but it's incredible how we've been conditioned to just work and to just press on and to just be successful and, you know, care more about what others around us think. And sometimes we've got to not care about others and we've got to just do what our body needs. And sometimes that is rest. So please do take some rest if you need it. Um, be careful with your relationship with your spouse as well. This might be a time where you um, don't don't expect too much from each other and, and give each other some space, that kind of thing. Uh, expenses, your expenses might be a bit higher than usual. And yeah, this is a general overview kind of thing. You're going to want to watch what you say in regards to relationships of all kinds, especially your father, um, for example, potentially, uh, depending on how things are for you. And... Yeah, kind of your, your co-workers and things like that. Mercury, what's going on Mercury? Okay, well Mercury, if you're having a good time, this will be why. So it's, it is a bit of a mixed bag here uh, because Venus is not thrilled either. So if you're having a good time and you're getting good energy, then Mercury might be really strong for you and this transit might be really good for you. So Mercury's in retrograde all month. It's going to be in your eighth house. And that's until September the 2nd in terms of, so yes, it's Mercury retrograde. Mercury is going to go forward August 19th. So this is great for you. And tune into Mercurial Energy. If you want, you can listen to my, I'm going to put the links below. You can listen to my Mercurial Energy meditation and that might help you boost this energy. I always think if we, if we consciously apply our free will, uh, we can create any energy we want. So uh, I don't see why you can't capitalize off what's here. So what is here for you? Um, we've got social status, rise in social status. We've got, you know, we've got you making very wise decisions and progressing in your career. We've got a boost to money. We've got mental peace and victory against the opposition. Yeah, this is for you, definitely. No, I, yep, no, this is for you. This is great, Sagittarius Moon. So do tune into that mercurial energy if you can. Uh, let's take a look at Venus. Venus all month is going to be in your 10th house until September the 2nd. Okay, a little bit of a change here. So there could be a bit of mental stress, some worries, um, you know, you, you, you want some caution around your finances. You don't want to be a spendthrift at this time and Venus can be a bit of a spendthrift. Right? Venus loves them all. We all know that. Venus loves designer labels. We all know that. Uh, 
avoid disputes with your spouse yeah for sure okay so i mean it's it's a bit of a mixed bag there with the faster moving planets let's take a look at jupiter in your 11th house and rahu ketu we're going to do a check-in with them in your eighth and second house now last time we covered saturn this time we're going to do rahu ketu because you know i like to mix it up uh, and i'm mixing it up even more because instead of me just telling you what is happening in these positions i'm going to ask you a question to ponder to meditate on and as you ponder and meditate on this question you'll be interacting with the energy of that planet directly. So are you ready? Let's go. So we've got Jupiter in your 11th house. The question to ponder is, if you could buy yourself an indulgent material gift, and I just told you with Venus that you might want to avoid that, but you can always fantasize, right? That's what we're talking about here. So if you could buy yourself an indulgent material gift, what would you buy? Okay, and who knows, Jupiter in the 11th house might help you to buy that even now if you wanted it. So this is something to either fantasize about if you don't have the money right now, but if you do, and maybe Jupiter is expanding your wealth in the 11th house, maybe you do end up getting some indulgent something or other. I don't know, but it's something to ponder and think about. With Rahu in your 8th house, the question to ponder is, if you could restructure your day to include 10 minutes of exercise, what exercise would you do? That's a really interesting one. I'm a big believer in 10 minutes of exercise every day. I don't think it has to be more than that. I personally do Tibetan yoga. Sometimes I do it twice a day, but mostly do it once a day. And I go on and off with it. These last few weeks, I've been on a really good run. Um, ever since Mars was exalted in Capricorn, I think it's ever since this mars k conjunction, it's been going on for weeks and weeks. And I have been so good with my exercise. Like just about every day I've done possibly just 10 minutes, which I know isn't a lot, but that's an achievement for me. <laughs> so I just thought I'd share that. But I mean, what I do is I'll, I'll do it for months and then I'll, winter will come and I'll drop off or something will happen, you know, but I'm going to try and keep it in there. And sometimes when I'm super, super busy and if I'm working in town and things are really, really busy, sometimes I'll do two minutes of exercise per day. So I'll get home and I'll do a plank. So, you know, those planks where you just kind of go into a certain position and you hold it for two minutes. I do that sometimes. So it's like, you know, I don't know, I think there, there, if, if there's no physical benefit, there's a psychological benefit that you did something good for yourself. So uh, with Rahu in that eighth house, it's definitely about health. And Ketu question to ponder. How long has it been since you clutter cleared your house? That is a cool question. Perhaps it's time for a bit of spring cleaning, even though it's summertime in the Northern Hemisphere. And if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, it is nice and cold there. I've been getting reports from my mum. Apparently it is quite cold. So, um, but doesn't matter. Spring cleaning can happen any time of year. And if you need to do some spring cleaning, that might be something to do. Uh, yeah, so Sagittarius Moon, I hope you enjoy those questions to ponder. Might be something to do with it, you know, get your journal out and write something down or maybe you just ponder them or who knows. But as you do your work, the energies of those planets. All right, Sagittarius Moon. Now we're going to welcome Capricorn Moon. Capricorn Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. What we're going to do is we're going to go through your faster moving planets and then we're going to take a look at your slower moving planets. And I've got something a little bit different and a little bit interesting for your slower moving planets this time. So we'll have a look at your sun. Uh, August 17th, your sun is going to shift from the 7th house to the 8th house. And is this looking good? Yeah, I mean, there's some stuff going on here. Um, you may have some challenges at work, quite possibly. This is really a time with the sun in seventh house to watch your digestion, okay? And diet-wise, you know, and I, I think all signs are going through this and all energies, and this is quite a big thing. My apologies, Capricorn Moon, the camera just dropped out. 
as it tends to do at about the 24 minute mark. Uh, I think it might be due to the heat actually. Uh, I know I certainly wanted to pass out a few times from the heat myself, <laughs> but I think my camera's just decided that it's too hot to keep working. So that's uh, kind of interesting. It, I tell you what, it's, it's the build of English apartments, right? That's what's going on. It's these apartments in England, they're built for cold weather. Yeah, I hardly have to turn the heating on in this apartment when it's winter, when it's like zero degrees outside. So you can imagine when it's 35, it gets really hot in here. Really, really hot. Okay, anyway, enough about that. It's just because we were talking about the sun, so that's why I decided to talk about the heat. Right, so the sun is hot, yes. And the sun on, I think I went through all of this, August 17 shifts from your 7th house to the 8th house, challenges at work, digestion. Yes, I think I was talking about the digestion and... What I wanted to talk about was the fact that we look, we can see this for all signs and we can see this for the entire collective consciousness. There is a real thing of, I'm just going to move the camera a bit. I hope that's better. Um, there's a real thing of like people cleaning up their diets. And, you know, this is happening all over the world. Millennials are these just glorious beings. Young people on the planet today are just wonderful. I love them, I think they're amazing. And many of them are just naturally vegan. They're just naturally not interested in meat. Um, you know, they're just naturally into the healthier things. And I must say, uh, I'm definitely, you know, I call myself a part-time vegetarian, but really, I mean, at home, I, I don't eat meat at all. I, I haven't done for well, quite a while now. Um, just, I don't know, it just doesn't interest me. But, you know, if I'm out and about with friends and they'll order a pizza and it has some meat on it, like, I, I won't make a big deal out of it. But um, I'll just, I'll probably eat it, really. But, um, so I call myself part-time. But, yeah, I mean, you want to watch your digestion. Uh, you've got, I mean, the sun is not thrilled to be in either the seventh or the eighth house. And you've got opposition to deal with. And you want to be careful with your health. You want to be careful with your spouse as well, your significant other. Okay, it might be a time where you guys just need a little bit of space, that kind of thing. Uh, Mercury is in retrograde and will be in retrograde all month. Not all month, no, I tell a lie. Sorry, I read that the wrong way. Mercury will be in ret retrograde uh, and it's going forward on August the 19th. And Mercury is going to be in the seventh house. He's going to be in the seventh house for the entire month until September the 2nd. So what does this mean? Basically, again, this isn't the best place for Mercury. Um, you know, people, people at work might be a bit more critical of you than normal. Uh, and that does link in with the sun there. There could be a bit of drain on your energy as well. You know, you'd think that Mercury would be quite happy in the second month, but he's not. Um, you know, you want to be a bit, a bit more conscious when you're dealing with family members and especially your spouse. You'll definitely want to just be more conscious, give certain relationships a bit of space and a bit of time. These energies don't have to be bad. Um, you know, they will be if, if you're not willing to go with the flow. I think that's that's how I'm going to phrase that. Uh, it might be a time to avoid travel as well. Yeah, it might not be an ideal time to travel. If you have to travel, of course do. Uh, there, there won't be any problem. But, um, you know, if it's non-essential holiday sort of travel that you can avoid, then, hey, you can avoid that. Let's take a look at Venus. Venus for the entire month is going to be in your ninth house. This is great. And she's going to be there until September the 2nd. Uh, this is really good. You could find that you get some unexpected gains from the government. Maybe a bit of tax money comes back, that kind of thing. Um, you may travel to a spiritual place. Beautiful. If you're able to sort that out, I mean, I know I said avoid travel, but traveling to a spiritual place well, you might need that. Uh, so, you know, if, if you plan it in a careful way and and you work with the planets, you know, with the Mercury in retrograde and not, not being in its best position for you, Capricorn Moon, you can listen to one of my meditations and you can use your free will to boost that mercurial energy. I'm going to leave 
link to my meditations below you're very welcome to tune in so you can boost that mercury energy if you need to uh, so with venus being in this position in the ninth house you can enjoy a good time with your partner and your health should be good so as you can see we've got a mixed bag so if the sun's really strong for you or if mercury's really strong for you perhaps those energies will be bigger and you won't feel the Venus energy as much. It just depends on what's happening in your chart and who's moving where and who's touching what kind of thing, who's aspecting what, etc. So, you know, this is just a very rough guide. Uh, but I always like monthly, you know, monthly reports. I like them because I just think, it, you know, it's like getting a little weather report. Sometimes the weatherman tells you it's going to rain and then it doesn't rain. But hey, it's fine because I pack my umbrella anyway. So, you know, this is that similar kind of thing. Now, for your slower moving planets, last time we touched on Saturn. So we're not going to look at Saturn this time. We're looking at Rahu Ketu. Uh, and we're going to look at Jupiter. Now, what I'm doing for each sign this time is because Jupiter and Rahu Ketu, they've kind of been in the same position for months. So I don't want this to get repetitive or boring or any of that. So in order to shake things up, in order to mix it up a bit, I thought I'll ask you a question for each of these planets. And as you ponder the question, as you ponder and formulate your answers to the question, you will be interacting with the energy of that planet. Okay, so I hope that sounds exciting. Let's take a look at Jupiter in the 10th house. Your question to ponder is, oh, I like this one. Yeah, I remember this one. How do you feng shui your mind? Cool, right? So feng shui is that, I don't know if you can use it as a verb, but I'm using it as a verb, why not? Uh, how do you feng shui your mind? How do you clutter clear your mind? How do you get rid of things from your mind that you just don't need anymore, you know? And there can be quite a few of those things, you know? We can always do with um, clearing the mind and letting go of old things and putting certain things to rest. So how do you clutter clear your mind or how do you feng shui your mind as I've got written here? Rahu is in your seventh house. Let's take a look at the Rahu question to ponder. Yeah, this is an interesting one. How do you make a difference at work? So, and, and how do you make a difference at work by smoothing things out or by helping others? And I'm sure you do because you're into astrology, you are, you know, you're watching this channel, so you're definitely a bit more evolved than everyone else, right? Come on. And I can tell, you must be a nice person, you must be someone quite wonderful. So how do you make a difference at work? And how do you smooth things out around you? How do you help others? This is a nice thing to ponder, you know, and how do you carry yourself in the workplace? Do you have this vibe of, when I turn up, solutions are gonna happen? I'm a solutions person you know how do you how do you maintain that mindset or how do you promote it or how do you develop it you know these are things that we're always mastering every day and we're always improving on so with the Rahu energy here in the seventh house you might be able to um, focus a bit more on how, how you really make a difference at work uh, you know, how, how are you indispensable at work? That's a great question to ask. And the Ketu question to ponder, Ketu is in your first house. This is a good one. This is something I'm actually focusing on. Uh, this is a really good one. What do you do to truly switch off? How do you switch off when the day is done and you leave work and you go home what do you do? Do you lie on the couch? Do you watch a bit of TV? Do you pick up a book? Do you do some crocheting? What do you do? What do you do to truly switch off? And when you switch off, I think it's giving rest to, I'm pretty sure it's called the parasympathetic nervous system. It's the one that regulates our adrenals. It regulates hormones and all of that kind of thing. If you've ever experienced burnout, or chronic exhaustion or any of those kind of things then your parasympathetic nervous system may need a reset and yeah that's big work sometimes and sometimes that can require some coaching I know I've definitely gone down my various paths 
uh, with other coaches that I've worked with for myself over the years and I've been able to, to reset my system so uh, I'm a lot happier these days. But Capricorn Moon, I'm going to leave those really big questions with you and we are going to take a look at, I think we're stepping into Aquarius Moon. Aquarius Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now we're going to go through your faster moving planets and then we're going to go through the slower moving planets. I've got something new for you this time with the slower moving planets, so stick around. It's going to be fun. Okay, the sun on August 17th is shifting from your 6th house to the 7th house. So this is, this is looking pretty good, except for when it shifts into the 7th house. Sun's not thrilled to be in the 7th house. So up until August 17th, you're in a, you're in a good phase here. Uh, there's good health, good time to travel. Your enemies will be weaker. Uh, you know, these are situations where you're going to win more. And enemies, it's a kind of archaic term, isn't it? But I mean, you could even see this with the with the six houses being um, debt. You know, debt might be easier uh, to obtain or deal with. Or, and I mean, enemies could even be, and that links into health. Enemies is also foreign bodies. It's also bacteria, things like that. So it's like good health, you know, you ward off enemies, you know, whatever that means in your world. Um, it can mean lots of different things. But you're on a winner there with Sun in the 6th. But then when Sun goes into the 7th, August 17, that's when you're going to want to just look after yourself a bit more. You're going to want to watch your digestion. You're going to want to look after your health a bit more. And there could be some challenges at work. So nothing major, uh, just something to be more conscious of. Mercury is in retrograde and Mercury will go forward August 19th and for the entire month Mercury is going to be in your sixth house. Oh, this is fantastic. Mercury loves being in the sixth house. You can look forward to you know your um, business growing, your knowledge just kind of improving leaps and bounds so great time to study something, great time to grow in terms of your business. Uh, this is wonderful. Money should be really good. Personal comforts, your health is great. You know, this is really nice, really, really nice energy for you here. Um, let's take a look at Venus. All month is going to be in your eighth house till September 2nd. And this is quite good too. Venus has got the strength here and she's got power here. She's able to mitigate problems. Good for monetary gains, uh, good happiness, great time with partner. Oh, this is really nice. You've got two good planets. And I mean, your sun's not bad, right? Your sun's quite good as well. Well, I'm happy for you, Aquarius Moon. This is really good. Students might need to study a bit harder. That's the only thing there with Venus, but that's looking really, really good. I'm liking that. Okay, slower moving planets. So last time we did Saturn, and we're not doing Saturn this time we did him last time and so we're going to do Rahu Ketu check-in. We're also going to look at Jupiter. Now because these guys stay in the same place for months um, I don't want this to get boring or repetitive so instead of me just rattling off what's going to happen with these placements I thought I would give you a question to ponder and as you ponder your answers to these questions you will be interacting directly with the energy of this planet. Okay, so let's take a look. Jupiter. Jupiter in your ninth house. So what is the question to ponder? Okay, uh, which spiritual teacher are you listening to these days? That's a cool question. I like that question. I'm always listening to spiritual teachers on YouTube or audiobooks or all that kind of thing. I know people really like doing podcasts. I used to do podcasts ages ago, but I'm, now for me it's mostly YouTube. Uh, so which spiritual teacher are you listening to these days? These days I've been really listening to Joe Dispenza. He's been fantastic. Uh, I listen to Sadhguru. I listen to Alan Watts. I listen to Ram Dass. I mean, there are so many. So this is a cool one. Which spiritual teacher are you listening to these days? Jupiter in the ninth house. Jupiter might bring you a new teacher. Who knows? Uh, Rahu K through check in. So we're looking at Rahu 6th house, K through 12th house. Your Rahu question to ponder is if you could add another income stream, what would it be? Wow, well, I like that. That's cool. 
you might have some hidden talent or something that you could do after work some kind of I don't know maybe maybe you're a brilliant pianist and you you play piano on Friday nights after work I don't know <laughs> but maybe there's something that you could do that you would love to do that would generate um, another income stream for you it's something to ponder you know and the K2 question to ponder is how do you celebrate or indulge in alone time? Wow, that is interesting. That is an interesting question. I wonder what I was thinking when I came up with that. I mean, Kate on the 12th, sure, that makes sense. But wow, celebrate alone time. I remember, I remember writing that and thinking that, yeah, that is like, do people celebrate alone time? Do people celebrate being alone? For some people, it's a real achievement it's a real good thing if they can get some alone time you know some especially mothers new mothers gosh that's hard you know and I've heard mums tell me stories like um the only alone time I get is when I go to the bathroom and that's it you know so you can see that is definitely something to celebrate so how do you celebrate or indulge in alone time that's a cool question Moon. All right, well, so that is your overview for the month. I hope that's been fun and interesting. And I hope the questions give you something to ponder. And who knows, you might journal some answers. You might ponder these in a meditative sort of a way uh, after this video. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that Aquarius moon. And I'll see you next time. And we're going to meet Pisces moon. Pisces moon welcome thanks so much for joining now we're going to take a look at your faster moving planets and then we're going to have a look at your slower moving planets and I've got something a little bit different and a little bit new for your slower moving planets this time so hang in there let's take a look so sun August 17th is shifting from the fifth house to the sixth house okay what's this looking like this is looking, yes, it's not ideal actually. The sun's not really thrilled to be in either place. Uh, and I'll tell you where the issues might lie. Issues might lie at work, in your career, your people above you, senior to you, may be more critical of your work. Um, and that's really for the first part of the month. So don't worry, it's not for the whole thing. Hang on, I'm just going to change the light here. This um, has gone incredibly dark for some reason. There we go. Okay, it's incredibly bright. <laughs> That's not making too much of a difference on the screen. Okay, uh, sun, I mean, yeah, sun's, okay, look, sun's not thrilled to be in the fifth house, but the sun is very happy to be in the sixth. So after August 17, you're going to have a good time. You're going to have good health, good opportunities, well, I don't know if the opportunities will come to travel, but it is a good time to travel if you are traveling or if you would like to plan a trip. Um, mind you, let's have a look at what everyone else is doing. No, I think that's probably good across the board. Uh, enemies are going to be weak at this time, you know, and, and you'll win if there's opposition. Enemies, it's a broad term. It could also mean debt. We're dealing with a sixth house there, so, you know, easy loans, easy money, that kind of thing if you're doing a property deal. Maybe that mortgage will come through, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, the sun is looking quite good in that sixth house. Let's have a look at Mercury, though. Mercury is going to spend all month in the fifth house. And Mercury is in retrograde. Mercury is going to go forward August 19th. So that's great. Mind you, I'm, I'm not one of those people who's superstitious about Mercury being in retrograde. It's not a problem at all. It, uh, you know, it, it generally means that the planet is more powerful. It's closer to the Earth. We're moving a little bit faster. Everybody's always moving forward. Um, it just gives the appearance that it's moving backwards in our sky because we're moving faster. <clears throat> so that's all that is. Um, yeah, I mean, this, this is not okay. And I've just said that thing about investing and easy loans. And Mercury in the fifth house, not a great time to invest. Okay, I mean, you know, sometimes life does need to keep moving forward. And I actually had 
this reminds me, I had one of my clients ask me, and she's a Pisces moon, isn't she? She asked me about a property deal. And she was like, should I, should I do the deal now? And I was really stressing after September the 2nd, everything's going to be really good for you. Yeah, I remember this. Okay, well, if you're a Pisces moon and you're watching this, do be careful. I mean, but what I said to her, because she really, really wanted to keep going with the property deal. I think she really wanted to sell it. It was important to her. I don't know. She was quite big on it. I said to her that, look, do your deal. Um, it's not like you shouldn't do it. If you do do it, ask for divine guidance. You know, pray for divine guidance. Pray for angelic support. Pray for your higher self to support you. Pray, you know, pray to everything, basically, and you're going to be fine. So if you have to do something, don't worry, you can do it. You know, don't, don't feel like everything should stop. I, I don't believe in that at all because I always think we can go beyond the stars. But I think it's very helpful to know what's happening with the stars because it is going to impact us to some degree. Um, so with Mercury here, I mean, look, what are we dealing with? We're dealing with a potential health drain, you know, arguments with colleagues. As I say, it's not a great investment time. Although the sun is favourable there, potentially with loans and things like that. But um, yeah, and students might need to study harder. So really interesting. Uh, Venus, let's take a look at what Venus is doing. All month Venus is going to be in the seventh house until September the 2nd. Yes, not a great time for Venus either. Hurdles in business, difficulties with your partner, your expenses might be high, higher than usual. You know, you've got to be careful with your co workers. So, really, Pisces Moon. Um, across the board it's things will I know this for a fact because I September 2 onwards things are going to be a lot better for you because I actually dealt with this with a client um, how interesting I just joined the dot put my notes together and then but I'm just joining the dot now it's late in the day that's what's going on all right let's take a look at your slower moving planets what's going on there now last time we looked at Saturn this time we're going to look at Rahu Ketu axis instead just to make it a bit more interesting I'm also shaking it up in terms of what we're doing here so we're checking with Jupiter we're checking with Rahu Ketu and I'm not just going to rattle off this is what you can expect uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something different I'm going to ask you a question to ponder for each planet and as you ponder your personal answer or response to this question, you will be working with the energy of that planet, right? So I hope this is a fun little exercise and I hope this keeps things fresh uh, on these readings. So, and it, you know, who knows? Every time maybe there'll be something innovative that I do. I don't know. This time this, this is innovative. So maybe not every month. Maybe I can't be innovative every month. Who knows? Right. Um, Jupiter is in your eighth house. So the question to ponder is um, sorry, it's just so boiling hot in here. Absolutely needed that sip of water. Do you know because England gets so hot when it's like we're having a heat wave, it's quite amazing. And I have to close all my windows in order to do these videos because my high street is really, really noisy. And there'll probably be like, I don't know, police car with the horns blaring, whatever. Okay, Jupiter in the eighth house, your question to ponder is, how do you feel about working extra hard? And what inspires you to keep going? That is an interesting question. How do I feel about working extra hard? I mean, yeah, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you don't want to. But what inspires you to keep going? I've got a lot of things that inspire me to keep going. I think about how hard my parents worked. That's an easy one. You know, you can always look at how hard your own parents worked and how tough things were for them in comparison to how life is a lot easier for us now. There's lots of ways into that question. There's lots of ways in and out of that question. Let me tell you, it's a good one. If you really sit and think about it, which I'm hoping you'll do. Sorry about that, Pisces moon. The camera just got cut. Tends to do that. I'm going to move it along. I think I've been waffling on for too long. I've been talking way too much. Uh, I think we dealt with your Jupiter question to ponder. 
How do you feel about working extra hard and what inspires you to keep going? Good question. And you know, Jupiter energy should hopefully give you some of that, um, definitely some of that wisdom, perhaps ability to leverage, you know, the knowledge of other people or other people's resources. Who knows? You might be able to get help if you're having to work extra hard. Don't forget to ask. Don't forget to ask the universe. I'm always reflecting on the energy of asking. I think it's a really fascinating topic. That's something I'm asking myself these days. How do I ask for help? <laughs> um, so these are good questions to ponder with Jupiter in this place. Let's take a look at Rahu Ketu questions to ponder. So we've got Rahu in your fifth house. Oh, this is a sweet one. Do you make time to let your inner child play? That's a nice one. And when you let your inner child play, what do you do? Do you draw? Do you um, paint something? Do you, I know I like to make jewellery. That's my favourite thing to do. Um, that's one of my favourite things to do. I've also got a little ukulele. I teach myself how to play musical instruments because there are so many free lessons on YouTube. Um, there's lots of ways to make your inner child happy. So, and, and to let your inner child play. I think that's really important. Ketu is in your 11th house. So your Ketu question to ponder is, what meditation style suits you best? Now, this is really interesting. What meditation style suits you best? So, I mean, you could try a transcendental meditation where you get given a seed sound and you, you know, you end up in that place of you're suspended in nothing um, and it's a 15 minute thing twice a day beautiful beautiful way to go there are also guided meditations that you can do there are also things like yoga i really count physical yoga as meditative exercise and i also think that one can be very meditative this is sometimes what i recommend to clients when i look at their chart and i see that say for example they've got moon moon mars close together I tend to advise, and it depends where in the chart and that, but I've advised this to a couple of people with that and they've really responded well to this and they've really liked the suggestion. And the suggestion is that their meditative style could be that they listen to something like a lecture by Sadhguru or Alan Watts or you know Abraham Hicks or something, something cool like that. You listen to a really long lecture and at the same time you're doing something with your hands. So you're making jewellery or you're crocheting something or you're um, sewing or you're drawing or you're sculpting or you know so you, you've got the hands working and you've got the mind kind of checking into some beautiful long spiritual talk of some kind and that can be a really nice meditative process or thing to do uh, these are just some things for you to ponder so i hope you've enjoyed that pisces moon thank you so much for joining and i'm going to let you go now i don't want the camera to break down anymore that's like the third time today i think but um thank you so much and if you like this video leave a like um, please subscribe if you haven't already and you're very welcome to leave any comments as well guys I love hearing your comments so please do leave me any comments that you have and I look forward to seeing you next time